es patín, pero no hay todo eso. Alright, um, I think the, the, the point is this, I think we must, um, let's look at the X-ray. I think, of course, uh, if you look at the wave, you can identify the wave, you know which wave to take on, I think, I think you can become successful a bit quicker. But it does not necessarily mean that um, other industries that is probably not at the wave at the time does not make you a successful person. But I, what I can tell you is that a recession at 2009, which is imminent, um, it actually gives you an equal playing level field again for every industry. Lehman Brothers worth billions of dollars can go down to zero, but with the collapse of the giants like this, it gives an opportunity for smaller people to then become the next giant. What I'm trying to tell you is that there's no Eureka moments. You will not have one point that you knock your head at the bathtub running outside naked, you can finally come out of an idea that makes you millions of dollars. I think what it does is that look at what you have now. What is to your best knowledge that you have at this point in time? It could be if you are very good with flowers, you can have, you can start opening up a florist. But that not necessarily means that your florist is the wave. But it's because of your passion for flowers. It's because of your hard work and dedication and focus on building your florist, it will then be successful. So I think that's the most important look at what you have, what your best knowledge that you have now, your best access to which community and network that you have, and that's where you must look at how you can leverage on people. And that's the most important thing. Thanks. Let me add on, on top of all this one say. In my speech that I said, uh, we do not have to reinvent the wheel. So, actually there's plenty of ideas out there. As I said, many of business ideas and patterns was found. There's less than 0.1% of all these business ideas and patterns found as commercial lines. So, uh, smart people, like me, I'm not very creative. Actually, I derive my idea by just copying somebody else. So, I just take somebody else's ideas, implement it, localize it, and improvise it, and implement it in Malaysia. Like my company, Asia Media, we run the largest bus TV network in Malaysia. So, to the, to the nearest country we've seen this bus TV network, is Singapore, and Hong Kong, and China. All of these companies are doing very successfully. I, I ask myself, I'm not from media industry, how do I play a part in media industry? But I'm quite surprised that to our neighbor, nobody has actually copied the idea from our neighbor and implement this in Malaysia. So I come up with the idea of having this exactly the same thing and doing it in Malaysia and doing it extremely well about it. Just copy it and improvise it according to the Thank you. Yeah, I yeah, know. Just very short, quickly, just like we say that everything you said was very true, especially about how the idea is probably like the least important. I mean, it's really, really small part of it all. Because as, as usual, any like business opportunity, in fact, I actually, actually hate the word idea. You know, I think it's really misleading and it's very fluffy and stuff. It, any awesome business opportunity you identify, I bet you like hundreds of people are going after it, or people already thought of it, so on and so forth. So there's so much work to be done, you know, to deliver and execute and improvise and innovate on top of it just to go for it. I mean, like any business success story you heard, like I'm sure like there's 500 people going for the same opportunity to fail. So a lot of energy, I think that's too much focus on the idea can be better spent in delivering, getting started, getting into action, looking for the right people and making things happen. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, Whiskey drinker wants to go. <laughs> Ideas are nobody's monopoly. Think big, think fast, think ahead. Hello guys, uh, great presentation to all of you. I'm Michael from MichaelTail.com. Uh, this question is dedicated to any of you who wish to answer it as a group again. Uh, do you believe in the stereotypical perception that when you start up their businesses, they should charge relatively lower costs in their services and products to gain market entry, market recognition, or just to be there. What do you think about this view and do you agree with it and why? Thank you. You put up 
Okay, just to share a little bit of experience. Um, basically, I think you have no choice. Um, the point is that when you started up your company, you basically you got to sell cheap. But that does not mean that you're going to sell cheap and that's going to be your only advantage. But what we can say is that you've got to differentiate your products. You see, you've got to first differentiate your products. You've got to sell at a price that people will accept your differentiated products, which is low price. And once they accept it, you should then able to actually charge a premium later on. But if you start to have a differentiated product, yet the price is an extremely high premium, and you have nobody as your trial, and nobody as your testimonial, then of course, your product will never be known. So I think you go to them, of course, you know, price your house is a little bit handicapped, but at the meantime, please don't take it as the only strategy. Uh, a lot of people, you know, even Malaysians, become very successful because they are low cost. But I think that's not the key important thing. The key important thing is must be differentiating. And once people feel your product, they know the differentiating factor, they don't mind paying later on. This. So, so I can see. I think there's one word that's most important. Value. You must provide value to the customer. Value can be brought in by either having lower costs or added value. But most of the time, I don't think value is brought in by having lower costs. I'll give you one example. Um, when I started MSC Cyberport, there was, we were looking around in Johor for buildings to turn into a MSC Theatres buildings because we wanted, wanted MSC Theatres very quickly for Johor. And we identified this one building. At that time, it was called Menara Sarawak. The building's occupancy was 30% and the rental rate was 1 ringgit 40 cents. And nobody wanted to rent the building. So I went to the building owner and I told them, look, change the name of the building to be my company name, right? I will get MSC status, increase the rental to 2 ringgit 50 cents. The upside between 1 ringgit 40 cents and 2 ringgit 50 cents, share it with me. I take 70, you take 30. Today, at that time, the building's occupancy was 40%. Today it's about 95% <laughs> at 2 ringgit 50 cents, right? So it's all about adding value to whatever assets you have. Anything else you guys want to get? Great. Um, uh, maybe instead of four, I think we're pushing our luck. I'm pushing my luck. Just take two more and then I'll do a closing. The first two just now. And I'm going to be a lady, man. First time, lady, check out. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and our distinguished speak speakers. Um, first of all, thank you for the inspiring talks just now. And um, I have a question regarding something that is pretty common, but it's something that all of us have a problem with, and um, it's time. And everyone, especially businessmen, say that time is money. So I know that all these successful entrepreneurs on stage, they juggle a lot of things. Can you, any of you share your experiences of how you did it? Your experiences with time management? Thank you. That's a nice question. A quick, quick one on that is that, firstly, everyone's got 24 hours. We don't have more hours. You don't have less hours. And secondly, how about other people's time? That's all. Jeff, um, when, when you talk about time management, uh, what's important with your entrepreneur is that you don't go ahead and go. More importantly, you try to actually partner someone with the expertise and the knowledge so that you actually learn at the same time. If anything screws up, you're going to have the you're not going to go through a child and error in the industry. So you're not gonna you know you're not gonna waste a lot of time there. Thus, while you move on to other things overseas, someone needs to be back here to look after it. You can't leave the ship empty and sail it by itself. You just can't take a light boat or a speedboat and go to the nearest island while the ship continues sailing. So always look partner someone who can actually knows what they're doing, knows the industry, helps you to run it while you explore to expand the business. One word, delegation. <laughs> okay, he said what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, your constraint is only in 24 hours, so you manage that time. Uh, whether you sleep, you don't sleep at night, or you sleep one hour in the day, or don't sleep at all the whole day, or don't sleep at all the whole week. 
that's entirely up to you. Uh, and I know these guys have gone through it, and a lot of you have done this as country because I've gone through it. Then uh, sometimes you don't even sleep. Even when you're walking around with your family, boyfriend, and girlfriend, you go, hey, you got to do this. Your mind is always working. The time is just relative that, that sticks in your mind that you only have 24 hours in a day. So, one last question. Oh, I do have a second, sorry, but. That do the day, yeah. Good afternoon, I have a really one short question. I'm just, I would like to know that uh, anyone of you, when you first you have your idea to start a business, how you raise your first capital to run a business? I mean that, uh, for example, us, we have an idea, but our financial background is not very good, so we do not know how to raise the capital. Huh? What? Why are you pointing at me more? Where to get money? Uh, yeah, we come to us, we have a program called the you don't give you a damn name. You have to apply, go to the motion, it's in about uh, if everything goes well, okay, you convince the evaluation committee, you convince the approval committee, you do blah blah, you have two months, you should get a fund for 150k, a conditional grant. That means it's not free money, it's almost free money. But that one is easy. One more, that's not what, that's not what I'm asking. Money was an easy question to answer. <laughs> one more, one more, one more. That's not the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I wanted to ask the same question, which is those steps and ways that we can gather our startup funds. The what and what startup funds? <laughs> how to get money. Oh, how to get money. <laughs> They're all rich, right? Angel right? <laughs> <laughs> funding, 10,000 each. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, no, so you go to PC Fund, you, you, there, there's a, sorry, um, you go to our website, there's this uh, program called the uh, PC Fund 150k. Okay, but no offense, 150k, 15,000. No offense to the big corporations, but they're not going to help you. What you're going to need to actually look for to be really become an entrepreneur with this kind of funding, you're going to need to look for high network individuals. This is going to lead, lead you to expand on your actually on your network. Don't waste time going out to the clubs. These people can't even afford to actually buy the, the, the bottles that they're going out for. You can't even talk business once you're in the club. Don't waste time for tea. You know, if you want to talk business, you want to talk serious business, talk it to a high network investor. Talk over at Starbucks, go to the office, take the time to actually do the research. And can I, can, I can honestly tell you, if you have a good idea, I'll, I'll fund it. And I'll fund more than 15000 Going out there, um, believing in your business plan, of course, solidly solid buying it and, and your figures um, tally that it interests the investors. You go out there, build your social network, build your business network, go, go out to any event, go out to conventions like this, go out to uh, networking sessions, and you'll meet people, you'll meet investors, you'll meet key leaders, and from there, you, you pitch your idea to them. And, and, that is, and also, yeah, when you talk to big investors, besides the money, definitely besides the money, they invest in the people, they invest in your passion, they invest in, in you, basically, in your character, in, your, in how, you, how you deal with problems. So, yeah. I think the issue is not really money, because there's a lot of money out there. The issue is really whether your idea, your business plan and you are good enough to execute that. You can go to MDEC and Angels, but what they want is whether your business is sustainable to actually raise the funds. Okay, um, just to share a little experience from you. I told you I started 5,000 bucks from my dad um, buying the computer. I think you can do that probably as well. Um, but one thing I happen to know is that actually to actually be with the group of people that can help you is very, very important. Because what happened was uh, my brothers and I, uh, we never had the opportunity. We, uh, we were not from any private schools which we were a lot of rich kids with. Uh, we are from Kabangsan School. And uh, basically we don't have the kind of network with high number of individuals. I'm sure many of you are facing the same problem as well. So the key important thing is of course what we did was we bumped, we, we one fine day drove our car to the star office and we bumped ourselves in there and tell the press that uh, uh, we have something to share in the world and uh, 
finally Star gave us an opportunity and uh, finally the investors are knocking at the doors. So what I'm trying to say is that they are not lack of investors, they are not lack of liquidity, you have MDAC, which is quite a lot of millions of billions of uh, you have there? How much you have there at MDAC that you can spare those guys? Uh, the budget that was given to us for the ninth major term is uh, 100 million. We put aside 60 million for uh, the grant. So meaning each one can at least get 600,000? Uh? Mm -hmm. 150k per person. Oh, like that, uh, I see. So what I'm trying to say is that the funds are there. So what you do is that you just need to prepare your presentations ready, your ideas ready. Most importantly, you must be able to present very well first. Then you're going to meet up with people like that. Then I'm sure they will give you the money. As I say, don't worry about your funding first. Worry about your business and worry about how you can ensure your business can grow and make sure one thing. Even your business is no good, right? Even your business is no good. Most important thing is you must be able to convince them first. So you must make sure that your convincing power is very important. Rosa? Yeah. Thank you. I think I would agree with uh, everything that I've said by all these uh, speakers. Actually, there is a lot of money out there. You just have to make sure your business plan is the best of the best. There's a lot of high net worth people who do not know what to do with their money. So just pitch that your ideas. Okay, um, I'm going to put you guys on a quick spot before I do the closing. Um, five words or less advice to this uh, crowd in, in them in marketing what they might want to do in about an hour from now. Five, five words or less. For one. No, they might, they might just go, shit man, I, I'm inspired, I want to do something because I can. So, uh, an advice to them, five minutes or five, you know, five words or less. I know Ganesh can do it one or half a word. <laughs> the main problem you're going to face with start a business is that you're going to find a lot of times that you're going to have a problem or you think it's a problem. Understand one thing, the only person who has a problem is the person who is lying sick in his bed with a terminal illness. He can't do anything about it, but you can do something about your situation. It's not a problem because it only needs to be thought out, to be planned out, and anything can be solved. Thanks, Jeff. It's not like 50. That's all it says. Five there, I'll make it. Eight and five, baby. Free your mind and go beyond you. Whoa, 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 so it's Free your mind and go beyond you. Go beyond yourself. Don't limit yourself. See, I give you a second chance to go away. Six words. Six words. Don't be shy. No harm trying. Oh, then I got many, many words. Finish me. What, 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 what I can say is that you must make the first step first. Uh, don't think about funding or whatever. You can start very, very small, but at least you start off something. And once you start off something, the journey will continue. You will start not to go in because, because you have no money, you will always be there. So you're always going to be who you are now. But if you start the first step, then I'm sure that's very important for your life. Okay. Five words exactly. I think, uh, just do it, like, no regret. Awesome. We got a couple of words. <laughs> some, some people find reasons to like uh, wait and procrastinate, but some other people find reasons to say yes, let's do it. Great. Uh, before we go closing, um